Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October 7th meeting of the Hyde Park Planning Board. Let me first note that this meeting is being conducted as authorized by Executive Order 202.68, the latest update of 202.1, which allows public uh, meetings to be conducted virtually. Let me also now confirm that each board member is alone and not subject to any, uh, any undue influence. Ms. Weiser? I am alone. Ms. DiNapoli? I am alone. Mr. Oliver? I am alone. And Vice Chair Dexter? I'm alone. Thank you, we have a quorum. Let me start by leading the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first item on the agenda is a continued public hearing for Dutchess County BOCES lot consolidation. As a reminder, this is taking four parcels and turning them into one so that they can avoid having to form a transportation corporation for sewer during their renovations. May I get a motion to reopen the public hearing? So moved. Second, Chris Oliver. All in favor, please raise your hand, signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? There being none, motion carries. Uh, Mr. Wells is here. We got a final plat with all of the uh, requests incorporated. Mr. Wells, do you want to add anything? No, I just want to apologize for taking so long to get this to the point where it's at. I hope it uh, satisf is satisfactory in terms of uh, addressing the concerns and and uh, so here we are. It's much more legible to read now, so we understand it. And for the board's edification, um, they're not going to uh, file a consolidated lot or deed. So this will be recorded. And so you, the dash lines you see are the ones that are going to be removed. So it becomes a single lot. Um, any comments from our consultants? Any questions from the board or comments? There being none, make it a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make that motion to close the public hearing. Chris Oliver. Thank you. Second, Ann Weiser. And let me note before I ask for a vote that when we close these public hearings, because we're still doing this remotely, we allow 10 days for written comments. So we won't be taking action tonight. That'll be at the next meeting. Uh, all in favor of closing the public hearing, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Nays or abstentions? There being none, the motion carries. Uh, Mr. Wells, you don't need to attend the next meeting when we uh, vote on the approval resolution, but you're certainly welcome to if you'd like to. Okay. So I guess the next step for me is to get uh, the signatures all in place and then bring it to you for final signature? Correct. The, and is that typically one mile R or uh, that's that's it? One mile R so for filing? The next step is actually the board needs to approve it the at the right. next meeting, vote to approve it. Um, I'm not sure if the planner had a chance to look at the new submission just to see if there were any other technical corrections needed. I might There's, wait until, until we Liz have full sign off to print the Mylars. Okay, Ms. I'm, I'm here. Um, I haven't commented on the prior flat. I can take a quick look at it though, not a problem. Oh, then maybe the, has the zoning administrator reviewed the changes? Yes, I, Yes, I have, and that's what I was saying. The changes look good. Okay. 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 So I don't, I don't think you need me to do any review. I don't believe. I just didn't want him to print mylars if there was the potential for an additional condition or change. Understood. Yeah. And Mr. Wells, when we have a draft of the resolution, we'll forward that one to you. It's usually the day of the meeting. Okay. All right, and then I'll coordinate. Uh, I believe. Um, we just need to file one with the town and one with the county. Is that typically, or, or just file with the county? You, you will submit the Mylar, the Mylar will be signed. You will take it and file it at the county. And then you will need to bring the town a certain number of certified copies of the filed map. Okay. And Cynthia can tell you what the number of copies we need are. When we get a little closer, we can finalize that. Yeah. Very good. Thank you much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Wells. Take care. All right. Take care. Stay Bye. safe. Thank you. Right. Next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing for Hyde Park Town Center North 
buildings three, four, and five. This is to extend the uh, site plan deadlines to complete construction. And basically the building that's not been touched yet is known colloquially as Feeds Plus. I get a motion to reopen the public hearing. So moved, Ann Dexter. Second, Diane DiNapoli. Thank you. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Any nays or abstention? Motion carries. Ms. Leibold, you want to give us an update? Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I am apologetic this evening, but I do not have an update. Um, it's my understanding that the contractor was supposed to go out and paint the plywood and the graffiti this week. I checked today. It didn't occur. I checked yesterday. It didn't occur. Um, I am incredibly apologetic. I have no answers for you except to say it wasn't done. I'm told it's supposed to get done tomorrow morning. I can only hope that that's the case. Short of that, I'm going to be out there painting it myself. <laughs> so I'm asking for an adjournment and I will go paint it myself um, for two weeks, please. And, sorry. I, I like the I'm idea just, out there and uh, overalls with a roller in the paint. Yes, yes. I just don't have any answers. I wish I did. And just so everyone knows, I spoke to Kelly earlier today about this, so I was aware. Um, she did tell me that uh, one of the site owners is livid that it hasn't been done yet. So we'll hope that that somehow translates into action. Anyone have any comments or questions for Kelly? Yes, does she charge by the hour her painting fee? <laughs> Would you like me to come do something at, <laughs> at someone's house? Yes. I'm just beyond frustrated that it isn't done. And I can't even tell you how many times I've driven up there. So I'm as frustrated as you are. Uh, I, had, I had driven through myself uh, to call when Cynthia asked me on my way back from a meeting. I saw that it wasn't done yet. So at any rate, uh, Megan, a motion to adjourn this then to October 21st. So moved, Diane DiNapoli. Second, Ann Dexter. Thank you, all in favor, please raise your hand, say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously, no nays or abstentions. And Kelly, we'll see you in just a bit. Four Thank you. The next item on the agenda <clears throat> is Verizon cell phone tower. We locate a proposed 179 feet foot tall tower uh, to be located at 113 South Quaker. Um, this application has been reviewed, reviewed, revised, changed, um, all for the better. And uh, we also uh, have conducted the visual resource analysis uh, we've had CAC and DEC uh, comments, all have been responded to by the applicant. And we have a more recent uh, Clark Patterson Lee memo dated October 2nd. It appears that we're ready tonight to take action on Seeker uh, and accept the part two and parts three of the environmental assessment form. Make it a motion to reopen the public hearing. I'll make that motion, Chris Oliver. Thank you. Second, Diane DiNapoli. Thank you. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Um, Mr. Sarchi and Mr. Olson are both here tonight representing. Do you want to make any comments, Brian or Scott? Uh, no comments on my behalf. If there's any questions, uh, Scott Olson's also on the uh, phone. I see. I don't know if he has to be unmuted to uh, speak with him. Uh, our attorney representing this case, but. Scott, do you have any comments you'd like to add? And Scott, you're muted, if so. I will take that for a no. Um, comments first, <laughs> Ms. Axelson. Liz, you're muted, you're muted. Yeah. I did an updated review memorandum dated October 2nd. Um, just reiterating some of the visual um, observations, um, which I've tried to incorporate um, by reference um, into the seeker documents that I prepared. Um, there are a few more um, plan revisions to be done. Um, but I I prepared fully AF part two and three for the board's consideration and uh, seems like the project's ready for a seeker negative declaration, in my opinion. Thank you. Victoria, any comments? Hello, this is Kathy Pomponio. I'm also with Verizon. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, we can. 
Uh, so, so Scott Olson says you guys need to unmute him. He is, he is on the call, but he's not able to speak. Um, hold on. I have no power to unmute him. I keep asking him to unmute. What's that? Kathy, we don't, we don't have a way to, we're, we're not, we're not muting him. Oh. All right, he's texting me. I will let him know. He should be able to unmute himself. All right, let me uh, let me text him. Thank he has you. a different symbol. Is that Scott? Did he not call in? Maybe. Yeah, he was. He mm -hmm. said that he's in. So I see him sideways. <laughs> oh, there's Scott. No, he disappeared. I think he's driving. So while we're waiting, I'll, I'll remind the board that we received comments back from the DEC and from the CAC, and the applicant has responded to both sets of comments, uh, either by incorporating changes onto the plan set or by just indicating that information has already been provided. Yeah, and actually the, the items that would have been needed to reply were already on the plans, so. In the for, DEC, for DEC. Especially. Thank you. Mr. Olson, are you still with us? Hmm. Okay, let me go into Ms. Moss. Comments, Ms. Moss? No, I have no comments. Thank you. Okie doke. Um, board members, let me start with Ms. Weiser. Comments? Um, no, I have no comments. Okay, Scott, we see you. We still can't hear you. Uh, not, you're, it's showing not muted, but we're not hearing you. Do you think your mic's turned down? Do you, is there a way you could turn up your mic on your cell phone? Nope. I can read your lips, but I can't hear you. Now? Yes. There we go. Okay. It's because we have a very large Scott, we can't make out what you're saying. Yeah, you're, it sounds as though you're from the bottom of a well with water on top of you. Maybe he your, your, vi your video is clear. I think you have an unstable internet connection because now you're frozen. Yeah, maybe none. Good signal. Chair Debris, I, I want to apologize. We've had storms in the Albany area that knocked out power in several different communities. So there's there is some connectivity issues and occurring you don't need to right apologize. now. You don't need to apologize. <laughs> I, we understand that. Don't worry. Thank um, you. These meetings are always a little iffy at any rate because of internet failure. So um, let me continue on with the board members then. Ms. DiNapoli, any comments? No, but his difficulty calling in is a good reason why I guess we need another cell tower. <laughs> Ms. Dexter? Comments? No, uh, no comments. Mr. Oliver, comments? Uh, no comments, thank you. Okay, so it looks as though we're ready to proceed. I'm sorry that Scott's not even on anymore. Can, uh, anyway, yes, Victoria. Can we confirm that there are no members of the public that wish to speak on this application? Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. I had asked that already, but yes. Um, Councilman Krupnik, can you confirm there's no one in the waiting room? Yes, I can confirm there is no one in the waiting room. This is for all public hearings, correct? Yes. At any rate, yes, that's no right. One signed, no one had signed up by yesterday when it was our deadline. So no one signed up. Thank you. I should have mentioned I should have mentioned that for the other public hearings too. Thank you, Victoria. Any other comments or questions? Okay. I believe Chris is going to introduce this resolution. Yes. <laughs> Uh, resolution to adopt secret determination of significance, negative declaration, Verizon Cell Tower, 113 South Quaker Lane, resolution number 2020-03A, whereas, 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 whereas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the planning board hereby determines that the project as proposed will not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts and that a draft environmental impact statement will not be prepared. 
Is there a second? Second, Diane Tanapoli. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand and signify by saying yes or aye. 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 Thank you. Any nays or abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. So um, what I would suggest we do is uh, go ahead and close this public hearing, but to allow the 10 days of written comments as well. And Liz, when I look at your memo, it looked as though it's in good enough shape that we could add, we could make some of these things conditions. Am I correct? I believe so. You know, I think it depends on what Victoria thinks, but these are all fairly technical comments. Um, I'm just kind of looking quickly. They're, they're fairly technical comments. I believe it would be a lot of conditions of approval, but I don't think there's a big issue. Um, the one thing we haven't heard back on yet is um, there was a comment, contact Dutchess County Department of Public Works about the need for a construction access permit and also a commercial access permit. But I expect we'll hear back soon. Uh, we heard back from DCDPW. Uh, they were the first interest, or involved, excuse me, interested agency to reply. And they just simply said, please keep them listed as an involved agency. I believe that's how they termed it. Uh, Ms. Whitman may correct me. Right. Um, and we, we, we do sure need a minor involved. correction to the um, Blanding's Turtle Protection Plan Sheet, um, but it's really a clarification. Just wanted that on the record. So Brian, I hate to put you on the spot since Scott's not here, but would you guys prefer that we adjourn this out by two weeks or a month to give you time to do one more change to the plans based on the CPL memo, or would you like them to be conditions of approval? I'd like it for it to be conditioned approval. Okay. Thank you. We can make a motion to close the public hearing. So moved, Diane Tanapoli. Second, Chris Oliver. Thank you. And note this will also be, just we'll, we'll exclude it to, we will allow written comments to come in for 10 more days. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? There being none, motion carries unanimously. So uh, we'll put this on the agenda for the 21st to consider approval. Thank you. Thank you. And Brian and Kathy, please Thank let Scott, you. When, we have a, when we have a resolution ready, we'll send it over in advance. Sounds Thanks. good. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Of Bye course, pleasure to work with you. Stay safe. Yep, you too. Bye-bye. Okay. I do want to point out for anybody who might be watching this on YouTube or wherever, um, I've said it before, so it's in the record, but it's interesting that we all, when we first heard about the size of this tower, we're really concerned with the visual impacts. And by doing the thorough analysis we did, it, it appears that there's very minimum, or very minimal uh, negative impacts to it because of all the surrounding trees and the fact that we have interesting undulating topography here. So a couple of spots that we'll see it really are on private properties for the most part. So but it was a great analysis to go through and it reminds me why we do this kind of work. The next item on the agenda is a workshop, a continued application for Hyde Park Town Center, also known as Park Plaza. Ms. Leibolt is back um, to represent the applicants. We have a new submission dated September 22nd that included uh, some revisions based on comments that the board made at our last meeting where we uh, undertook this. Kelly, welcome back. Let me turn Thank it you. over to you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. We did uh, provide you with a new submission as you had indicated dated September 22nd. Um, we tried to address the comments that were raised at the last planning board by the planning board members um, and the planning board consultant, um, Clark Patterson Lee. We did provide you with a response letter um, trying to itemize each, each of those comments. Some of the highlights, um, I try to break this project really into two sections. So there's the architectural approval. Um, I'll, maybe I'll start with that first. Um, thank you for putting that up. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to share my screen or not. Um, on the architectural approval, I think some of the... Kelly, actually, if you could share, it might be better because there's a lot of slides and I might not know where you... Sure, I'll, I'll share my screen. Uh, okay, hold on one minute. Okay. Um, I think the, um, with respect to the architectural, sorry, it doesn't want to move. Uh, 
some of the, um, this is the easier one to start with. Some of the changes that the board um, had discussed was removal of some of the, uh, there were metal brackets next to the columns. Um, so those were removed. Um, there were some planters that were shown on the elevations that were incorrect. Um, and so we corrected those. Most importantly, um, we amended the signage so that we're, there was consistency on the north end um, where CVS would be located and on the south end where you would have um, that second parapet and architectural feature with um, the Westchester Medical um, main entrance as well. And then with all of the signs um, and the signage in between being the white letters um, on the dark background. Um, there were a couple of smaller um, comments that the board had raised and I just wanted to make sure that you understood that I had addressed those. Sorry, I'm going to flip through really quick just to get to the front. It mostly had to do with um, Antonella's and there were some questions about the space um, and whether or not there was an actual extra unit. There you go. Um, yeah. Yep, that was located right here. Um, it showed as two spaces and it was just incorrectly drawn. So we corrected that as well. So I think as far as the floor plans um, and the architecture, we addressed uh, hopefully all of the board's comments. And if there's something that I missed, please let me know and we'll address that. Um, should we stop there and just go over the architectural first, Mr. Chairman, or do you want me to well, keep going? No, so that's, this is a good time. Actually, this is a perfect time, Ms. Leibolt. So uh, I discussed this today with both Kelly, um, Liz Axelson, our planning consultant, and Ms. Polidoro. And one of the things that, so to go back in history a moment, when this was first proposed about a year ago, and we saw just a sketch of what they wanted to do to reclad the building and renovate it, update it, et cetera. We made some comments, there was a back and forth, and then they applied. In the interim, uh, Williams left, and they had a tenant that wanted to move from one side to the other, you saw both the interiors. So, and that also has caused now them to, uh, the applicants to change the circulation flow, et cetera. The applicants are very interested in trying to move forward with, with the recladding, in other words, changing the exterior as much as possible this year so, uh, but because I think we're going to have more issues involved, uh, we have to circulate this also to Department of uh, County, uh, Department of Health. It seems as though there's a way to break this into two phases so that they could, we could maybe approve phase one, which would just be the architectural, the exterior of the building, and let that move forward while we continue moving forward with uh, reviewing the second part of the application, which is the larger site plan. And Victoria, do you want to touch on that for a moment for me or with me? I think you covered it very well. Um, we would break up the site plan into two phases, one being the exterior alterations, which could be approved, um, you know, uh, expeditiously if there were no further changes needed. And phase two would consist of the changes to traffic, landscaping, any of, uh, of those items, the playground, uh, which will take a little more discussion to make sure everything works properly. Does that seem acceptable to the board? Everybody's nodding. Yep. Yes. Okay. Because I, I, I think we're all as residents interested in seeing this plaza could go some updates that will make it probably better to easier to market as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because of the season that we're going to be facing soon. It's going to be hard for them to actually start work on this unless we get them going quickly. Um, Tad, I don't see you anymore, but I know you're here. Yes, I, I was going to ask if the signage, including the front monument sign, would be attached to this phase or the next phase. The front mm. monument sign would probably be the site plan, more of the site plan aspects of it. But we would be approving at least the locations of these signs as well. Okay. And personally, I think that the that the solve that the sign issue was solved because now you have the balance for the other two. But we'll hear from my colleagues on that one. So. Kelly, it looks like that's just going to, and when we refer this tonight to uh, Dutchess County Department of Planning, we will ask uh, Heather to, I guess, make a, an expedited review of just the architecture, and then she can separate out her response for the rest later. But I'll okay. talk to her about it. And just um, to add one final comment, if anyone's wondering why we're rushing so much, the, um, if you remember, the material here is um, hardy material, and it's actually a cement fiber material. It's very difficult to work with that as the temperatures drop and it gets colder. It's really temperature dependent. 
Um, although it can get installed in the winter, it gets very difficult and it doesn't handle well. Um, so we're trying to get this started and bid um, so we can get this work moving and commence again on the cladding and the exterior improvements. Thanks everyone. So Kelly, I'll send it back to you for the rest of the changes. Okay. Um, so going back, sorry, let me just get back to the, I forget where the site plans, oh, it's, I gotta go down. <laughs> I apologize, I'm getting dizzy watching it myself. Um, so uh, we did provide you with an amended site plan and one of the items that was requested was to do a separate landscaping plan, um, which we uh, pulled out. It's such a large site, so it is very difficult um, to try to get all of this on one page, but I'll try to sum up, which I think were the major comments that were raised. Um, one had to do with the circulation and one of the biggest changes that we made was to actually modify the circulation and so if you remember um, vehicles uh, used to come in and they would start at the south um, and go to the north um, in a circular pattern as i'm showing on the plan and it was actually i think several years ago when one of the planning board members had mentioned why the traffic circulation wasn't going the other direction um, which would be clockwise. And I remember at the time thinking that would be really brilliant because then the doors to the buses and the vehicles and so forth would line up with, you know, where the children are getting out of the car. Um, so we actually put some thought to that to see if we thought that that might be a more beneficial circulation. And we did in fact make that change now that we have pick up and drop offs on the north side and the south side. Um, we worked pretty closely with uh, Joe Berger's office and came up with a plan where um, vehicles can actually drop off on the south end um, and this is a two-way circulation pattern that will allow vehicles to come in and actually make deliveries in the back and turn around and come back out again. There are no um, do not enter signs here to prohibit people from going in that counterclockwise direction like they used to go. Um, and then this circulation again which is now clockwise will allow um, the children, if they're getting out of a car or getting out of a bus, to get immediately dropped off in front of the door um, and the location where they're getting picked up or dropped off. If um, we do have an excess amount of vehicles um, that would be dropping off on the northern section, we did create an alternative um, pick up, drop off, turnaround area here, where if we do get an excess amount of vehicles that are having a challenging time turning around, that we have the, the drop off. I think one of the questions that Liz had asked is, um, how do people know to go to that drop off? And it's been my experience. I've only seen this a few times. I know maybe you have seen it more frequently, um, but when there is a pick up drop off, there's always a representative out um, by the vehicle. So directing parents and directing um, people who are picking up and dropping off to try to help and make this a little bit more seamless. Um, there was a lot of, uh, uh, I don't want to say de minimis, but smaller comments that were added and we noted those in um, our response letter to try to clean this up. Um, you know, propane tank needs to be removed. The shed is, is going to be a vacant structure. More importantly, I think some of the items that uh, were of concern had to do with the proposed playground area, um, which I did go back and walk um, through this area. At the last planning board meeting, we talked about maybe putting the playground area on these southern parking spaces. And just when we were out there, it didn't feel right. It felt like it was in the middle of the parking lot. Walking back here, although it's difficult to do because the weeds are so high, it felt as if it would be um, a more conducive to an area that was sort of shielded from the building and some of the landscaping that was there. So we left um, the proposed playground in that area. It's a chain link fence and um, we noted that. Um, we don't necessarily know what the material is going to be on the surface. I mean, we had proposed um, the a playground, like a rubber tire mulch um, in this area on the plan. If the user wants to change it, we can change it. Um, the other playground will remain um, as well. The other uh, kind of major discussion had to do with landscaping. And so um, we tried to clean it up and create a separate landscaping sheet. Some of the major highlights are um, when you walk out of the plaza and you get off of the sidewalk and you walk into the parking lot here, there were plantings that were previously here that were removed when they redid the landscaping. And so we're gonna place um, boxwoods back in that area. It'll create a nice little hedge there and some greenery to try to break up the building. We did more clearly articulate um, the uh, landscaping, 
the American hornbeam that are going to get planted um, up along, I'll call it like the back of McDonald. So it's the connector drive that brings you up to the other plaza um, in that area. There was a discussion of um, trying to add some plantings in the striped areas um, to try to break up the parking lot. And so I had focused, um, Michelle and I were working pretty closely on this area and trying to put, um, just take out the striping, essentially really just cut it out, saw cut it out and almost make like a rain garden and put some plantings in there. And it seemed like a great idea until we realized that this is the area for the septic field. And um, even if we were to put shrubs or some other material in there, it was uh, too close to the septic field and it was more of a stormwater or rainwater issue than um, the plants disturbing the septic fields. And so we weren't able to put anything in, um, in that particular area. I could interject real quickly. When I sure. spoke to Kelly earlier, when, we, when Tad and I went back to the 2008 plans, the septic with the SDS that was labeled back then is actually to the left, not to the right. It doesn't go to where the striped, where that it's not, doesn't go that far. It's actually all to the left of that drive aisle. Yeah. So I asked Kelly to clarify so we can make sure we know where it is. Uh, it also showed that there were seepage pits in the, I guess I'll call it the uh, third bit of park, the, the parking aisles that are closest or the parking stalls that are closest to would that be Mizu Sushi maybe, uh, or the tax, uh, over to the right uh, of the main building. Anyway, there's some seepage pits shown way up at the, not, not there, Kelly. It's actually shown, if you go to the east, keep going now to the south, and now south, <laughs> now more east. <laughs> right in through there, there. That's where it's shown as seepage pits back in a 2008 plan. I also, okay. that back in 2008, we had uh, Mr. Berger, or Mr. Berger's office, do a parking calculation because we'd asked for that here and they supplied it. The numbers back in 2008 versus the numbers now don't jive. Part of that seemed to be when I looked at Antonella's, our parking uh, guidelines say that it's so many spaces per square footage of patron use, but it, they, they use the entire square footage of the restaurant rather than just the area for patrons. So that may explain some of the discrepancies. So I've also asked Kelly uh, to have Joe and Michelle go back and take a look at that again because it should more or less, except for the change in uses, it should be pretty close to what we had in 2008 because there's a lot of things were just office and retail. Okay. Uh, so anyway, we'll um, check those. Yep. So, uh, I mean, I, I think that we did, we, we do sort of value, you know, we value landscaping. I, I think that's evident from the plaza to the north. Um, I think the plaza to the north looks amazing. Um, Michelle is actually texting me because she's online and so she's listening to, to help me with this, but it's actually the expansion areas that are the problem for the septic fields. And perhaps if we illustrate that on the plan for you, that may make it a bit clearer. You know, we do love landscaping and, and you know, Michael, you know, the Knicks and the Knicks, they love it. I just think <laughs> that this is an area that is extremely compromised and it's going to be very challenging. We think we're doing an incredible financial investment into the architecture of the building. And, you know, we'd love to add more. I think it's going to be challenging to do this. We do know that the, the town is working on improvements along the sidewalk and there's going to be some new landscaping down at the, you know, the bottom as well. So to the extent that we can enhance that after the town is completed with that work, we certainly would. But I think um, with respect to landscaping, unless someone has some more creative ideas, I don't see where we can add anything at this point. It's just like I said, it's, we would need to see that you can't do it instead of just being yeah. told. Because well, and we'll show you. Sure, yeah, I do understand that. I think that. that's what we need right now is that um, we don't have, I'm not sure if looking at the 2000, the one, the plans that were signed in 2014, if those existing conditions are accurate based on what Michael and, and Tad were describing. So it would be helpful to know. Sure. You know, where are these things? Maybe on an existing conditions plan sheet and see. Agree. Yep. If there's a way to find, you know, a couple spots. Sure. Yep. I, and I think, I, and I understand that and we'll show it to you. We're just trying to put all of our investment really into the architecture. I think we might have lost sight of some of the improvements that we're actually making to the architecture and not just recladding the building. So we're adding those two big, um, boy, I'm going to use the wrong words, but parapets, those architectural features that are going to get added to the building. So there's quite a bit of structural and um, roof line improvements that we're doing. I don't know if you remember, but there was one planning board member that really helped us to design the top, the peak. Um, so we're hoping to really focus our energy there, but you know, willing to certainly look at it and we'll show you where those septic fields are. 
I should also have added that um, board member Wasser, Stephanie Wasser, and uh, our engineer, engineering consultant, Mr. Cetera, have both joined us. Oh, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Um, the other uh, significant uh, submission was, um, I'm glad that Tad is on the phone, happens to do with the monument sign, and here is the monument sign. So at the last meeting, um, it was brought to our attention um, that the sign was actually too tall. Um, and so uh, Grace from Glody Signs worked very closely with Tad on better understanding the code and some of the dimensional uh, methods for calculating the score footage. And we modified the sign to come up with this sign. Essentially what happened is the signage for each of the tenants got smaller. Um, so that the sign would meet the code for the proper height and um, dimensions. There was also one tenant, I, I don't remember which one it was, but there was one lone tenant that was red before and so it really stuck, it stuck out. So we modified those so they're all black and then the two tenants on the top are red. And this is consistent with the signage that was installed up on what we would call like the northern part of the site where McDonald's is. So it's very similar to that sign, to the monument sign. And before we move, uh, move on from the sign, I take it that the existing landscaping will remain there as is, correct? I wish I could say no, but I think it's staying. <laughs> I'm well, not no, fond it's... of these grasses. I don't know what those are. You may know what those are. They always look very uh, unorderly to me. So, uh, but they are staying. Uh, it's not my favorite either, nor Tad's, but it is what's there. But yeah. the, the, those, the greener, gra the, the blue gamma grass is actually not in this bed. So I just want to make sure that we know that there's going to be landscaping around the sun. It's going to be what's there will just stay. Yes, correct. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anything else you want to add, Kelly? I think that is it, unless anyone has any questions. We will start and you'll hear from the consultants on the board. But I did want to say that I thought um, it is moving forward nicely. Um, and I do, we, I, I think I can speak for the entire board by saying we certainly appreciate the investment that the owners are making, particularly at this time, to uh, upgrade the entire site. Um, again, with the landscaping, it's just, it is in our code that we're supposed to have, you know, landscaped areas within se certain sections of parking. Yes. Um, and so it's just a way to justify why we wouldn't enforce that as we did at the site uh, just to the, or the adjacent plaza. So we start Understood. with um, Ms. Axelson comments. Um, sure. Um, yeah, I, I definitely can see, you know, what um, the applicants are trying to do here. And in particular, Michael and I had a discussion today about the fact that the child care centers on either end and other health related facilities will kind of, they're going to act as anchors, um, which, which should be good for the plaza overall and that whole business area. Um, so um, I know that the traffic flow was described in the response letter. I guess what we're looking for in um, my first three comments in my memorandum of October 6, 2020 is um, something a little bit more descriptive on the plans so it's clear. And the other thing is Michael and I had a discussion today um, and it, it to me it feels like it would make sense for anybody that's traveling through the site, whether it be buses, individual vehicles with children or whatever, um, and delivery trucks to have a traffic flow that works for all. And it looks like you're trying to accomplish that based on what's described, but it wasn't really clear um, on the plan. So we can talk about that a little bit more. Um, let's see. I already mentioned that we probably would help to see the underground improvements in relation to the landscaping that's desired. Um, that's in my comment number five. Um, and then when I was trying to compare your zoning table and your sign tables and parking tables, I came up with a couple of different issues. So I just made a few comments on that figuring when you take this back to the drawing table and start working through it, um, it'll all get ironed out. Um, and I guess I understand the concern about uh, parking on the site, um, but you do have a lot of users that, for example, the childcare centers on either end that aren't going to necessarily be using the parking all day because there's a pick up and drop off pattern. And I really think a little bit of greenery on this site would help. 
Um, let's see. I think Pete's going to touch on stormwater management facilities. And then, you know, there's some brushing up to do um, in the rest of the plans. I don't know if the board would like us to have offline consultation to go over some of these things. Kelly, I'll leave that uh, up to the board and to you to see what's desired. Um, if you think it's valuable, if Kelly and you think it's valuable to speak directly, please go right ahead. Sure. I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Zotero, welcome back. We haven't seen Hi. you in quite some time. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, I really don't have any comments on any, uh, you know, drainage. Um, I know there, and uh, I haven't been um, too too involved with this application so far because it's been mostly, uh, you know, facade stuff. Um, the one thing that I do want to say, though, about the applicants that kind of like relates to this project is uh, I want to make sure the planning board um, knows that uh, both Nick and Nicholas have been very cooperative um, with uh, the town in terms of uh, granting the town uh, the, the easements that we need for the next phase of our sidewalk, um, you know, projects, uh, have them, them owning both uh, this plaza, uh, the McDonald's area, and then also, uh, you know, the other plaza, uh, they've had to grant us um, three easements and they've been very, uh, very cooperative, you know, throughout that. And um, Kelly certainly helped a lot with, uh, you know, the McDonald's one, which was not easy. So I just want to make sure that we know that. Oh, you got the McDonald's easement? I believe we're all set. Kelly. Yes, we delivered it. Um, it was hand delivered yesterday to Aileen's office and then the attorney and Warren Raplansky should have uh, all of the temporary easements. So it was a little bit more of an effort than we thought, but uh, it was hand delivered yesterday. Yeah, so all of the paperwork was delivered yesterday. Yeah, so. And if I could just go back for a moment while we have Tad and Pete here. Um, one of the responses, Kelly, that you provided, um, there was a question about stormwater management facilities that had been approved in 2014 and hadn't been constructed. And the response was, um, the roof leaders are going into a planter along the front of the store. So this is, this is a nod to Pete and Tad to look at that and, and see if that issue is sufficiently addressed. Correct. And I could have um, Michelle um, call Pete or Tad or either and give them whatever documentation they need. But um, because those roof leaders are now being tied into the landscaping in the front, that same calculation was offsetting the calculation in the back. And it seemed like a better... Um, approach anyway to put those roof leaders into that landscaping area, but whatever Pete and Tad need, we can get to you. Yeah, we'll take care of that. I don't remember exactly. There was supposed to be some kind of a stormwater practice in the back and yes. Um, yep. You know, we'll catch up on that. That's okay. Okay, good. Fine. So that's it, Michael. I don't, I don't really have too many comments on this one. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Moss. Uh, I want to go back to the freestanding sign and we agreed or I suggested that the measurement for height, maximum height be taken from the central point of the sign since it's on a slope. And it's my understanding that some of those rocks need to be removed from the rock wall so that the sign can be lowered and will meet height. Mm. Thank so don't you. be surprised. Okay. The rock wall will actually shrink is what you're saying. It'll go, it'll be smaller. A little bit, yes. But that's okay because it's, you need to have the proper height. They don't want to go for a variance. And the way you're measuring this is the same way we measure grade for buildings, et cetera. That's how we measure everything is the center going forward. So, okay, doke. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, any other comments, Tad? No, nothing that can't be dealt with offline. Okay, and one suggestion I'm going to make is that we set a public hearing on phase one only for two weeks from now, and then do a separate public hearing for the overall site plan. I, I just was um, chatting, I guess is what it's called, with Victoria, and that seems to be a legal, that's something we can do legally. So we could have just comments on the architectural improvements, including roof line, et cetera and then ask for more comments once we're further along with the process with the overall site plan. Michael? 
Yes. It's a little, it's a little hard for me to have all of that done and noticed for a two for two weeks from now because of the yeah. There's a little bit. It's a little bit more I, than it had been because of COVID. If uh, Cynthia, mm -hmm. um, if, if you can get the notice together. Um, this is a situation because of COVID and everything. We could ask uh, Kelly Leibel to take care of sending the notices out and getting it to the paper and giving us an affidavit. We're to willing to do that. Does that sound like something you can do, if, Cynthia? If you're okay uh, with it. I'll, I'll do my best to get it out before the end of the week. So, I mean, if you can, I can write the notice. It just depends on whether we're allowing um, live participation or not during the meeting, or are we leaving the notices the way we've been writing them? We still have to keep the public hearing. We have to allow 10 days to receive written comment after we okay. close the public hearing, in other words. To be discussed. Okay. Councilman Kremnick on perhaps just this one application. So, oh. um, and I was actually going to go to you next, Victoria, for comments. I uh, know. So I was just confirming that Kelly is agreeing, Ms. Leibel yes. is agreeing to send out the notices in this one particular case as an accommodation. Um, it would be good for the uh, record if you could just give us something in writing saying that you are proposing to phase the application, phase one being the exterior alterations phase two being the site improvements okay. and then i'm sure that'll be noted on future plan sets very well and tonight uh there is a resolution prepared to refer the whole project over to county planning uh, so we can start getting their project their um, comments thank you well, let me start with board members um ms weiser um, comments? Oh, just uh, i think the building's looking great I do have a quick question about the, um, um, about the, like around the area, around the Southern playground. How much traffic do you anticipate going through there? What is the frequency of traffic do you think that's gonna be going past that crosswalk? I'm sorry, I just had an interruption at the house. I am so sorry. Could you just repeat the question? I apologize. <laughs> um, around this, this, the Southern playground, how much traffic do you anticipate going through, going past it? like? That, you know, past that crosswalk and like what is the frequency of the traffic do you expect? Okay, um, that's a very good question. So I'd actually received um, some information from Westchester Medical about their um, drop off and pick up. So I'm just gonna read to you what they said to me and I can forward it. Um, typically they have buses, which are either small buses or vans that arrive um, 8.30 a.m. Monday through Friday. And then again at 1 p.m. they have three dismissal times um, Monday through Friday at 11, 2, and 3.30. Things could certainly change a bit with COVID, but this is what we've always done in the past. They do have a significant amount of parents that also drive now um, with COVID. Um, so he did not give me volume and number, um, but those, at least I know that their drop-off and their pickup are broken up into three separate times throughout the day. So it does seem like it could be a lot when you've got children going through that crosswalk. So I was just curious if it was too much. It, it, it's actually, um, I understand this group that's moving here is the same group that was in the north. And so they had the crosswalk um, across to their playground as well. And I understand that when they have um, children in that crosswalk, they have people with signs um, that are stopping the traffic and directing the traffic, if there is traffic. Thank you. Thank you. A good question, Anne. Ms. DiNapoli, questions, comments? Yes, thank you for the architectural plans. As always, they are lovely. Um, I want to just mention in terms of what Liz has mentioned about the transportation flow, the traffic flow, that really would be helpful if we can see it on the plan. Um, I know in the agenda meeting we had talked about if need be, if we, if we as a planning board get a um, traffic study to help ensure the safety, particularly for, obviously for the children. With regards to the septic idea uh, plans, do the NICs have access to the original septic plans? 
Well, Joe Berger has been the engineer of record for this project or this property really from the beginning, from the inception. So he has all of the documentation. So we're very fortunate that they have all of the data and we'll, we'll put together an existing condition sheet for you so you can see that. So you can see, fabulous. Yes. Yep. Because we're but, spending a long time thinking, well, if it's here, we can do that and it's there. Yes. And, and with clear direction of exactly where the septic system is, I'm hoping it will allow for more landscaping. Um, I think when but I show think that you, will come in time. Yeah, when we show you the plan, I think you're going to go, yep, and I wish I had done that for the submission, so I apologize. And I think it'll be very clear to everyone. Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. Yes. Um, with respect, if I could just ask a quick question with respect to the traffic and you had mentioned possibly a traffic study, we're trying to get Mid Hudson moving I, from wait she did not mean traffic study in the conventional okay. sense oh okay. no 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 okay because no. we're trying gonna, to get i was going to yeah. clarify that what what we want so for example when you show on the site plan when you just have the arrows we really should need we would really need to see a turning radius for whatever the delivery trucks and the buses understood are. understood because yeah. we want to make sure we have a better a more clear idea that's what liz was also referring to uh, understood an illustration sort of, right it's just okay. drawn but it's what I mean. What's the largest truck you have going back there to deliver, say to Earth Goods or whatever? We want to make sure that there's plenty of room back there for that. That's that's it. Understood. And I think if you can also, given oh, sorry, given what Anne just uh, what Anne was comments, I think if you could get um, Westchester Medical to give a better idea of a pro I, I believe that when we reviewed this before, I remember there being the three separate times for pickup um, because. Some people drop their kids off for a long period, some for short, some for just a middle, like one or two classes. So I remember there were the three separate times, but they, they actually gave us an estimate of how many there were about okay. an and We're not gonna, we don't need to, you know, nail your feet to the ground on this. It's just- Yeah, I, yeah. You know. I think with COVID, these poor families, everything is changing, but we'll try to get the peak. So at least you have that. I'm and sorry I know if, I, if I made you have your heart come up. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, you know, just like with, I don't mean to, uh, you know, usually when I ask, it's something serious, but they are trying to get moved into this new location yeah. because of COVID. Childcare is such an important part. I'm sure everyone knows who has kids. We're all kind of pulling our hair out as far as what, you know, what we're doing. And so they are trying to get into this space as soon as they can, you know, so we're trying to advance this. Um, the town has been very gracious in allowing the building inspector to start reviewing the plans for this work while we're before you because we're really trying to get both of these projects started so we can get them moved over into the new space. Believe it or not, even those of us who are barren and childless do know the issues with childcare right now. It's I tough. can assure you, I, I'm in a lot of Zoom meetings where all of a sudden someone who's probably not supposed to be there will just come in and start asking for things who's like four or five. These are grandchildren in the, for the most yes. part. Yes. Like, thanks, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm like, it's okay. So Diane, you wanted to add something else before I turn no, it over to Liz? I want to say thanks. Okay. Liz? One quick point. I think the concept was to get a plan sheet that's like a traffic flow plan. I think that's maybe what Diane means by a study. And then we have Jennifer Mishnewitz, who is a um, um, professional traffic operator, engineer, and um, she'll just take a look at that. That was the concept. But I, but I don't want her, her to look at anything until we have that from you guys. Understood. Just to Thank be you. efficient. Mr. Thanks. Oliver, comments or questions? Uh, really, I would just like to thank the uh, the owners, Nick and Nicholas, for you know, despite the ongoing pandemic, to uh, continue to invest in our town and try to help their applicants better serve our community. So, thank you very much. We'll express thank that you. to them. Ms. Dexter, uh, I would also echo that I'm really grateful that they're investing in our town. Um, at a time when other places can barely stay afloat. So um, yeah, big thank you to them. I do appreciate the, the streamlined um, appearance now, uh, taking just the slight tweaks that you did to the architecture, you know, I think left a, a much cleaner look. Good. But, so I do appreciate that. Um, I'm excited that, that we might be able to see this happen sooner rather than later. So, um, uh, Yay. <laughs> um, and I guess I would just echo, um, you know, just wanting to see better the traffic flow. I, I think just, 
I like the ideas that I'm hearing here. I don't think we need to do anything more. Um, yeah, Michael, I do remember when we, the, oh, low those many years ago, that we did kind of get an account of cars and it really wasn't, it really didn't rise to the level of being like, oh, that's a lot. Um, it was, it didn't seem to be anything that, that the site couldn't handle. Um, okay. Good. Um, and then my only other comment is, these, in my head, I can kind of remember seeing the drawing of the septic and, and the pits and everything. And, and I do understand that. So I'm going to guess the answer is no, but I, I'm going to just ask this, that <laughs> is it possible in the warmer months that on those like lower, um, you know, the, the stripes that come down and you were looking at those two end cap to the parking, I'm wondering if we couldn't put something temporary there like those cement planters um, and then and then in the cold weather they would just go away because that I don't think they do well with uh, snow and plowing but it could be something that just sits on top of the concrete there and could have you know those what are those those bulbs with that they come up and they're like five feet high and with the big red flowers I mean you could just do something very summery um, and oh, canna, canna lilies canna lilies canna lilies and Whatever they are, there's, they're beautiful. I know they're bulbs and they, they're just, anyway, I don't know if we could do it because it's temporary and I think the site plan requires, I'm not sure how we would handle yeah. that. I'm just, I'm, I'm just if, wondering how you would pick up, how you would lift a concrete planter <laughs> and relocate it. That, that might be the bigger issue because they're heavy. Big strong man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pete, Pete's, Pete's going to uh, no, uh, offer to do that. No, I think, I think you can do it with um i mean if you get the right kind of planters you can just use a forklift understood and then but then we have to bring equipment in but um i'm not sure about the temporary structure i can talk to Pete yeah. and liz offline I, I think it might be difficult if someone hits it um because usually when you have a planter island you have either a curb or someone protecting the vehicle yeah, from you have an edge over it right yeah it, that's what the curbs usually stops the car from hitting it um i'm hoping that the boxwoods are really going to make a difference I know it sounds like they're insignificant, but they're not. I just, I love boxwoods. And I think getting that hedge broken up in the front, you know, where you go from the pavement into the building is going to help immensely. So I really hope that's going to make a difference. Yeah, there used I, to be one, right? Correct. There used to be pretty much along yes. the entire front. I grew up here. I know, I remember. <laughs> it, yeah. it, but it was also, it was Hemlock. It was uh, uh, you. Oh, okay. And it was sort of, they were large, they were tall, they were blocking the building. But more importantly, they were, they also were, <laughs> Not in the best of shape anymore, to be honest yeah. with you. So. Right, right. Ms. Wasser, comments? Well, I've been listening. I'm uh, sorry to join you late, but uh, I agree with all the comments I've heard from my colleagues. Every, every single one of them that I've been listening to, I don't have to repeat them. Thank you. So I can then summarize. Well, actually, my only other comment was, actually, I have two comments. One, can you call the site plan back up, Kelly, by chance? What you're proposing, the most recent screenshot we had. Oops, sorry, we have to go through the vertiginous. Yeah. Right there. So number one, does, does, the, does the round uh, sort of ping pong paddle turn around up there? What is the size of that? I didn't, I didn't have a chance to scale it. It had a 35 foot radius. So it was uh, 70 feet. So isn't, isn't that kind of big for just vehicles or is that designed I mean, for passenger cars? Or is I that think it's just supposed to be for passenger cars. I think that's what Michelle had intended. And that it needs to be that big for a turnaround for passenger cars? Um, it, uh, it looks huge compared to the building. Yeah, well, I'll, that's a good point and I'll check it. Okay, the second thing, the other comment I have is, I think I told you before, but if you're standing at the uh, southwest corner of the building where where Mid Hudson Regional will now go, and you look north, you can see all the way to Pinewoods without ever seeing a tree. I've been wondering if it's possible to plant a tree in what I call that's it right there, the the car seat looking thing. Yes. Right about where that. Yes. Is it possible that I don't know why we didn't do that when McDonald's was here, or before us. I guess. Okay. I've been I, I, I'll ask. There, um, is, there may be a reason why you can't. Yeah, right. I'll ask Michelle. I have to tell you that I we actually Michelle and I did this on the screen. I'm like, okay, how about here? <laughs> and we circled every one to try to come up with a reason why. But this one we didn't look at probably because it was so far away and I didn't 
think that that was um, one of the issues. I knew there was a view shed issue, but let me ask her um, and see if there's anything in there or not in there and see if we can put something. I'll just make a note of it. Great, thank you, because that, that would solve it. Then the last thing is, I believe that there might be some signs for businesses that are long since gone. In prior code, I believe those are supposed to be removed. Um, there may be reasons why you keep them up, uh, I don't know, but I believe there might be some free, uh, some wall signs that are up on businesses, particularly on the lower side of children's medical group. Otherwise, to some, we are, I'll ask to set, we'll get a motion to set a public hearing shortly, but we're gonna do this in two phases. As Victoria said, you'll need to give us a little bit of a narrative on that. And we're prepared also by resolution to refer this to county planning and to the Dutchess County uh, Board of Community and Behavioral or Community and Behavioral Health. Um, the signage, I think everyone seems acceptable uh, now, including the freestanding. Uh, we'll, we still have to it's sort of grapple with the issue of possible increases to landscaping, but that may not be able to occur. And again, we need to go through and revise the parking table because they really shouldn't be that far off from 2008 to this one. Um, that's otherwise you heard a lot of discussion, and everyone agreed about better description of the traffic, you know, showing the, the plans, what the delivery trucks are. Um, we need to show the sewage disposal system area. Um, and then just maybe a little bit firmer number on what the daily, not daily vehicle trips are, but how many cars will be going through for the drop off uh, for the relocated daycare. Otherwise, it looks like we've, I, I, all I heard was positive, positive comments about the architecture. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. As Ann Dexter said, the idea that we could see this happening soon really is a yay for us. And we, again, we do appreciate that um, both Mr. Cetera and Mr. DeBreezy are interested in moving forward at a time as was pointed out by others, when some towns aren't getting any development right now because of the uh, economy worries about it and the pandemic. So, really a um, so first, I believe that we had the resolution will be introduced by Vice Chair Dexter. Yes, um, but I did want to just ask if Tad had a comment. I saw your hand go up earlier. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Uh, I, I think the as-built drawings for the McDonald's will show that there are utilities under that island, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's probably worth looking to see if the tree could be moved further west rather than on the corner. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tad. Thanks, Anne, for catching that. Sorry. No problem. Uh, resolution classifying the action and referring the application to Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development for Hyde Park Town Center Plaza. Resolution number 2020-15, whereas, 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 now therefore be it resolved that the planning board hereby classifies the project as a type two action under secret. Two, directs the secretary to refer the site plan set to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development pursuant to six, section 239M of the General Municipal Law with a request for expedited review, and three, directs its secretary to refer the site plan set to the Hyde Park Fire District and Dutchess County Department of Community and Behavioral Health. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Um, and then may I get a motion to set the public hearing for phase one only? of this for October 21st. I'll make so that motion, Ann Dexter. Thank you. Second, Diane Tanapoli. Thank you, any further discussion? And this is with the proviso that uh, Ms. Leibolt has agreed to uh, make accommodations for getting the information out to the surrounding, uh, air, surrounding property owners. All in favor, please raise your hand, say aye. 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 Your abstentions, motion carries. Thanks, Kelly, very much. I'm glad we're gonna work this through. And uh, Thank you. we will, Victoria and Councilman Krupnik and I will kind of middle through how we could handle public comment, open, allowing the public in at that point on this one application. So Very we're trying well. to get it done with speed. So okay. thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. The next item on the agenda is a new second uh, single family dwelling to be proposed to be located at 148 Cream Street. Uh, under the name Small, as Mr. Berta doesn't seem to be. Oh, there you are, Mr. Berta, is yes, representing sir. the applicants. Yes. Let me turn it over to you. It's I. I don't think you're going to hear a lot of questions, but you can describe what you're proposing. Okay. Well, what we have is um, Mr. Small is um, is going to be renovating his the the current residence on the property. 
and um, that um, when they knock the house down and they rebuild it, they're looking at a, a, at least a two year rebuild. So what they're proposing to do is put up a garage with a, um, it's larger than an apartment, it'll be a single, we're going as a single family residence above it. So we'll have two single family residents on a 40, uh, almost a 41 acre piece of property. That'll give us a density of you know, one unit per 20.5 acres, <laughs> four acres. So uh, well within the density that we're, uh, that we're allowed. I think it's a, I think we're allowed 16 units per acre by the density. Uh, uh, it's, it's one per 2.5 acres in the green belt where this is located. Yeah. It's an average, yeah. an average, but you're allowed far more. You have plenty of room, have no fears. Yes. yes. So we're, we're looking to put uh, that up so that, uh, cause that could be a, we're looking to build that, start that as soon as possible. Uh, Dan Kohler of Hudson Land Design is working on uh, the septic with the health department right now. Um, the the uh, septic for the main house is, a, is an approved system. So that's gonna stay where it is. And we're looking to put in a, uh, a second system for, um, uh, for the, uh, the new residents. So it'll be two separate systems, new well for it as well. Um, the driveway, we're, we will be using the same driveway. So it'll, it'll share, it'll split off as it comes up. Um, other than that, I mean, that's, that's, that's really the project in a nutshell. I have to say that when I first heard about this, I wasn't sure about the size. I assumed it would just be a garage apartment. And I have to say that's probably the biggest and prettiest garage apartment we'll have in the entire town. It's, well, it's they're, nice they're planning on living in it for, you know, for a couple of years. So they wanted to make it nice. They wanted to make it a home. This is one where I, I want to also say we're delighted to have them investing in our community because this is really quality development. Yes. So um, at any rate, let me, I don't believe that we're going to have much review by the consultants. Um, Liz or Pete or Victoria or Tad, any comments? Now, the only thing I think uh, um, Liz had a uh, note from your uh, agenda meeting, just wanted me to take a really quick look at the erosion control. And then, I mean, that's it, really. That's what I thought. So um, comments from the board. Let me start from the uh, top. Ann Weiser. Uh, I have no comments. I think it, I think it looks pretty great. So congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Wasser. Uh, no, I agree. I think it's kind of unique and it looks great and I uh, wouldn't mind living there myself. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Dexter? Well, after about two and a half years, you probably could. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I'll, I'll move in then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell Joe to reach out to you. <laughs> any, any other comments, Ann? No, it just looks great. Thank you. Chris? Chris? Oh, it looks great. Good luck and looks like a nice garage. And Diane? I think we're gonna have a slumber party there. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it five garages or six? Because I only saw five. It's four. It's, there, there, there are four garage doors. Okay, it's four. Okay, yeah. I'm, I just I it's, 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 Yeah, Joe actually owns a tractor. That's why one of the garage doors is a little bit taller than the others. That's he what, has okay. a, uh, a small backhoe and plus a lot of other toys. Thank you. And thank him too. And I had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Small and Ms. O'Malley. So I got kind of a full idea of what they're doing and it's gonna be extensive. They're planning um, more gardens, lots of stuff you know, around the site. So, um, and they, Mr. Bird is correct. They said straight out that it's gonna probably take a year and a half to two years by the time they tear it down and redo everything on the new house. So. This is something that they'll be living in for a while. Um, and it's a blend of families with, with lots of children. So that's also why they have so many bedrooms. Otherwise, I have no comments either. We are prepared to um, type the action and refer it. Just a, a reminder to everyone, even though county planning normally does not comment on residential applications, and they don't even get subdivisions, but because this is a site plan, it nonetheless requires us to refer to county planning because it's located on a county road. So I believe Ms. Weiser is introducing this resolution. I am. Resolution classing, classifying the action and referring the application to Dutchess County Department of Behavioral 
in Community Health and Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development, small 40, 148 Cream Street, October 7th, 2020, resolution number 2020-19, whereas, whereas, whereas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the planning board hereby classifies the project as a type two action under CEQA and determines it will perform, I'm sorry, one, and determines it will perform an uncoordinated review and two, directs its secretary to refer the site plan to the Dutchess County Department of Behavioral and Community Health and Roosevelt Fire District for review. Three, directs the secretary to refer, refer the site plan to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and De Development pursuant to section 239-M of the General Municipal Law. Second, and Dexter. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand and signify by saying aye. 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 We want to set the public hearing tonight for a month out, or should we wait till we get back responses? Mr. Bird, all right, how much of a rush are you guys in? Um, they'd like to start as soon as possible. So if we could possibly set the public hearing for next month, that would be great. Um, Hopefully that, uh, that would give the county um, enough time to, to respond. Uh, it's, I'm not really worried about the county, and this is, uh, you know, type two, uh, type two. Mm -hmm. So it's it's this should be fairly easy, um, I, I think. And I don't think the county's going to have much comments because this isn't going to not to countywide impacts, but it's a requirement since it's on a county right. road. Right. So, the, the reason we um, the reason why we're keeping the same entrance is to to minimize the amount of impact on the road. Smart, smart thinking. Uh, so then may I get a motion to set the public hearing for, uh, would be and November 4th. 4th? I'll make that motion, and Dexter. I'll, I'll second, second it, Diane Denapoli. It's second. several people get ready to second. So uh, any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand, say aye. 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 Nays or abstentions? There being none, motion carries. So Mr. Berta, a pleasure to see you again and work with you again. This it will is be a pleasure, Michael. Thank you. This will be brief, I can guarantee you on this one, like the last occasion. So anyway, we'll see you back on the 4th. I'll see you on the 4th. Thank you so much. And, I, uh, and I'll actually be in, the, uh, be in New York then. Right now, I'm calling you from Phoenix, Arizona, or Scottsdale, actually. That explains why you're in a t-shirt when it's actually chilly up here. Yes, it's, um, it it's 102 warm. degrees. Oh, <laughs> sorry. It looks warm. And yeah, it is. So the rest of me, it would be, uh, I'm actually in my bathing suit, so forgive me. <laughs> Okay, Doug. Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank Stay you. safe. Thank you. See you on the fourth. The next item on the agenda is Hudson Valley Hospice House. And we reviewed this in a sort of workshop format uh, at a meeting two, uh, a month ago. Ms. Zerfus is back here, as, and Mr. Machado, I believe, is here, and Mr. Kaminsky are all here. Um, we also have a new review memo from Clark Patterson Lee. I actually earlier sent a note to Liz thanking her for its thoroughness, but also more importantly, to introduce at the very beginning uh, a reason for why we would not have the building moved up front and parking in the rear, because it's the nature of this being a healthcare facility. Also the, uh, the needed location of the site uh, in terms of where this, the raised bed septic would have to go kind of precludes putting the building where you might think it would want to be. Um, last time, according to my notes, we heard replete comments about how nice the architecture is. So um, that's always a plus moving forward. And let me trade over to you, uh, Mr. Machado or Michelle, who wants to move forward from your side? I only called half of your conversation. I just got in. So uh, <laughs> hello, everyone. I'm, I'm a fast talker too, sadly. So you may have just missed what I had to say. Anyway. Thanks. Basically. Um, Go ahead. You want me to do the quick intro? Sure. All right. So um, the last time we met, we showed you a couple of images and so forth. And then uh, what has changed since the first submittal, uh, the first two pages, the title sheet and the existing conditions remain the same. But we added several more sheets as well as updated the proposed site plan. Um, in as far as adding sheets, we added a survey map that was uh, produced by Carney Reinwald, uh, landscape plan, erosion plan, and the lighting plan. What also has been revised 
are the proposed uh, site plan and the changes that we made since the first preliminary meeting was added uh, uh, a row of trees along the Violet uh, Violet Road, which is also known as uh, I can't think of it. You know, along the uh, the the street face, we we put a row of trees, <clears throat> and we also added on the north side, parallel or uh, you know adjacent to several residential lots, we added trees along the parking lot, um, around the entry of the parking lot and the entry of the access road from Route Nine uh, G. We also uh, showed indication of greenway and added two islands on each of the uh, parking lots that were proposed. Um, in the lighting plan, we indicated the lights that are gonna be around the main access road that surrounds the whole building, uh, even though that's in the preliminary phase, and uh, also indicated uh, a variety of evergreens and deciduous trees around the property. That's just the gist of it. If anyone has any questions or you know, details, please let me know. Um, thank you. I want to point out again, just for the record, that this is classified as a residential use. And so technically screening is not required, but the applicants have been very generous about doing it. And we also, though, do require that there be some way to stop the lights from going on to people's parcels, uh, going into their houses, perhaps, you know, through uh, back doors, et cetera. So the addition of the landscaping is definitely going to help with all that. So thank you, Mr. Machado. Um, let me start off with our, Michelle, do you want to add anything? Zerfus? Um, no, for the, just, I know this for one of the comments, I, I added the two small islands, but we're kind of limited on parking. We can't go to the Northeast because the slope gets too steep. And that's why um, on the landscape plan, there's some hatched areas which show we're doing the 15% if you consider those the appropriate areas. And on the grading plan, there's, it shows the sidewalk that goes along the proposed sidewalk that's gonna go along Violet Avenue that unfortunately got dropped off of the CAD on the other drawings. <laughs> but it'll be on the next, next set. Okay data la those pesky data layers as we say yeah um, let, me, let me start off with our consultant then ms axelson comments well i did have a nice um conversation with michelle today and found out in fact they do have a dartboard at their office with my face on it so um, <laughs> i appreciate it. it was all in good humor well um, I, I told liz we actually have a revolving one and depending on the reviewer du jour it sort of changes turn it like a clock. Um, so anyway, yeah, my, I, I tried to do an extensive review. There were kind of two submittals. So I tried to go through everything and give a, a pretty, pretty good um, set of things to, to look at. And I uh, just wanted in the first comment to reiterate why we understand that the parking's in front, et cetera, and the functionality of the building. Um, I, I guess I thought at the last meeting we were going to see um, maybe a tiny plaza right up on the road frontage on Route 9G with a couple of benches. That was the concept of bench or two there um, for people that have to wait for a bus or whatever. So that's another one of my comments. Um, let's see. And I was just taking a look at, you know, again, I understand the need for the pull off and, and the width of the access in front of the building and all that. Um, the one thing that wasn't really clear to me is why there is a sort of circular driveway going around. So I'm asking that perhaps it be considered to have some turnarounds instead of having that whole thing go around unless there's some specific reason. Um, and then another thing that, um, I don't know if this was brought up at the last meeting, um, or if it was brought up at the agenda meeting, the idea of having a gravel emergency access over to East Dorsey, 
And I don't know if there's a way to work that in as sort of another pedestrian amenity. So those are some thoughts. Um, Pete had raised some concerns, obviously, um, engineering concerns about drainage and the need for a SWIP. So I'll let him um, touch on that. Um, and then I'm suggesting in some of my other comments that um, I always encourage applicants to take credit for wooded area. Um, I know there's a request for a waiver for a tree survey, and I wouldn't suggest it for this site because it's just a wooded site. Um, you can see it in the aerial photography and perhaps aerial photography could be incorporated into a separate plan sheet to just show that rather than a tree survey. Um, but the other thing is to try to add some notation and plan labeling that shows that on the outside of the limits of disturbance that there is some existing wooded area that maybe need not be taken down. So it would be labeled as existing wooded area to be retained. And, and that would kind of provide a natural backdrop for some of the other plantings um, that you're suggesting. Um, let's see. And then I have some zoning table comments that are kind of technical, but I think should be easy for you to address. Um, and I did, I didn't get too much into detail for uh, site plan standards and requirements because I think there may be some shifting a little bit. If you end up um, revisiting that circular driveway, you'll have less impervious surface area. And then I did a pre pretty comprehensive review of the full environmental um, assessment form. I'm not really looking for any, you know, major reports, maybe just some more um, facts to be added to the narrative about uh, water usage to address, you know, the fact that you have employees in addition to um, the 14 rooms and visitors. Um, those are my main points. Thank you, Liz. Um, Mr. Sotero, question, uh, comments? Uh, sure. So, uh, so this site, um, my uh, main concern is uh, stormwater, obviously, and then also the amount of uh, rock excavation that we might have. Um, as far as uh, the stormwater goes, uh, they're proposing that most, uh, most of the stormwater will be handled by an infiltration basin in the back. So we need to have a preliminary SWIP uh, you know, on this, I think we, you know, we need to have it for secret purposes. And, um, you know, I assume that there's been some soil tests done in the back to, um, you know, back up the infiltration, um, you know, method. So I'd like to see a preliminary uh, stormwater pollution prevention plan on this job, because um, I think that we'll need it for secret purposes. Um, as far as, as far as, um, uh, rock goes, um, you know, it's kind of hard to see now with uh, the leaves down, but um, I've walked this site before uh, years and years and years ago with the owner uh, when he was thinking about, you know, other projects. And if I remember right, there, there are quite a few rock outcrops here on the site. So um, I think the applicant needs to quantify the amount of rock excavation for this um, project. Uh, I assume that they've done, you know, soil tests um, throughout the site, uh, but if they haven't done them in, uh, you know, the area where, you know, the building's going to be, uh, I think that something has to be done so that we can quantify, uh, you know, rock. Um, rock excavation uh, or blasting, um, you know, is obviously uh, a short-term impact in terms, you know, like, of noise, but we do have um, residential areas uh, around the site so we have to go document um, rock excavation, not only uh, you know, for noise, but also um, we do need to know uh, all, the, all the folks in the area there are on individual wells. Uh, so I have a case in uh, another town where we're going through the same um, thing where we have um, houses uh, with wells that are close to uh, a proposed site that has quite a bit of rock excavation on it and there's uh, a concern and i'm not saying that it's going to be the same thing here 
uh, because I think in uh, my other case that the houses are closer to the site than the adjoining houses are from what I saw on parcel access. But I think we need to um, quantify that. Um, and I think they have to locate uh, adjacent wells uh, anyways for health department uh, you know, purposes. So I'd like to see, uh, to get an idea with some kind of an area map uh, where uh, you know, the wells are on the uh, adjacent houses um, in relation to you know, the site and then also to try uh, and quantify as best they can um, at this point, uh, what we're looking at in terms you know, of rock excavation. Uh, because, you know, rock excavation can have an impact on wells. And, um, you know, in my other case, we actually had the applicant uh, had to come up with a um, uh, well monitoring and a foundation um, monitoring plan that would be um, presented to the uh, adjoining owners. And if the adjoining owners uh, agree to it, uh, then they would have their wells and their foundations, uh, you know, monitored. Now, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's going to be the case here, but it is something that I think we need to look at with uh, the fact that the neighbors are on wells. So those are, uh, you know, my general comments. An excellent point. And I believe all your comments are uh, embedded within Liz's memo from CBL. Yes. Yep. And actually, a lot of the geotechnical analysis you're asking for, the quantify the rock excavation, et cetera, approximately how much, um, that's, you're asking for that to go into the EAF. And now, Pete, you're going to kill me when I say this, but it's because... Never, 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 never. Well, you, you never know, um, but it's because Mr. Berger was the one who sort of brought this up to me. But when you were saying we need the SWIP, we do need the uh, preliminary SWIP. In terms of seeker, I've been sort of persuaded that stormwater really isn't a seeker issue because either they get the SWIP approved or they don't. Now that noted, everything else you mentioned about the rock, et cetera, is part of seeker because it has direct impacts. Mm. But, uh, the only time I've really, the only time I think we held open seeker based on stormwater was really for the original hotel to CIA because that stormwater was such a mess where it was going that they had to relocate the building. So we, we couldn't close seeker until they finished that, Victoria. I mean, I'm going to agree with Pete that you at least need to know that stormwater can be dealt with. <laughs> oh, of course. But I mean, in terms of, I'm just sort of, it's education for the board. I don't, I, I don't think it's necessarily a seeker issue, um, except to the well, extent right. that we I mean, the changes to the design. Finalized, but they need to address stormwater and stormwater impacts and prove to the board that any design that they're proposing, you know, will be able to treat it on site. And especially, especially in the back, I believe I have to. I'd have to look at the plan again, but I believe that uh, there's might be an overflow onto uh, adjacent, you know, property. So, uh, you know, we do need to know that the you know infiltration basin will be able to handle it. And you know, you're not supposed. You know, it's it's you know, you're not supposed to increase the amount of water leaving your site. So. Post development must be equal to pre development. Excellent, excellent, excellent. <laughs> right. The, the last time this was a serious issue was um, Dollar General, where we didn't oh, want to. Yes, yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Exactly. I don't know if, if this will rise to that level. I, mm -hmm. I defer to the expert. Yeah, but we need enough of a SWIP or a drainage plan to at least have a concept in the final. Yeah, bits. now, now, After now, you know, like honestly, I mean, I don't know that we need a full. I don't want to say a full preliminary SWIP because that doesn't really that doesn't really sound right. But I mean, really, all 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 I need are some backup um, calculations that would um, show the amount of water um, going there, and then that that the, that the soils will be able, you know, to 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 infiltrate it. You know, all the other you know bells and whistles that come with you know the SWIP in terms of you know like the narratives and you know, and this and that. I mean, that, that kind of stuff can like wait. We just need some engineering uh, calculations that, you know, will prove that the, that uh, that infiltration basin can handle it, so. It, it is I six find... acres of disturbance, so. It's a large amount. And I do want to point out, just so everybody remind, to, to recall, they are also before the ZBA seeking a variance from scale, a rather sizable variance. Um, this noted, because the variance has to be for the parcel. Is it required to uh, grant only the minimum necessary? 
this is two parcels right now. So we need to both conclude subdivision as well as conclude secret before the ZBA can act on its variance app on the variance application. So this doesn't sound like it should be anything hard, but it's just a little complicated in terms of where everything falls into place. Um, that's why I said we have a uh, resolution in order to get this going to uh, refer this to the County Department of Planning and Development um, that started uh, on it and also to uh, send out for seeker notices to all the interested and involved agencies. Um, Ms. Anything else, Pete, for tonight no. on this? No. Ms. Moss, comments? No, no comments at this time. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Polidoro, comments? Um, I didn't see a sidewalk. Was, was there a sidewalk it, on the submission? Data layer fell off. Oh, okay. It's shown. Cat, cat issues. So um, for, let me start with our board members. Let me start with Ms. DiNapoli, comments? I want to thank them for again investing our town. It's nice to have more than one big project on our agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Oliver? I will echo uh, Diane's comment. It's surprising, you know, despite what's going on, that people still are coming in and investing in our town. And I hope it keeps going that way. So thank you. Me too. It's exciting. Vice Chair Dexter? Um, I echo that, but you know, again, just seeing seeing the architecture, it's such a beautiful, um, it, it's just really eye-catching and it looks, I don't know, it looks uh, peaceful. So um, I do like that, but I am just a little bit concerned about the infiltration because um, I, just down the road from there, I was on a project for the SPCA and we continued to run into all kinds of issues with rock. Um, and if, so I'm hoping that you have patches of dirt in there somewhere that, uh, that you can utilize and that, uh, uh, and it's hard rock too. It's not the nice soft rock. So good luck. Um, Ann is referring to the fact that the SPCA they, had, they needed to connect to a municipal water line and the cost to go underneath 9G with the rock was substantial. So, Ms. Wasser, comments? Uh, yes, I agree with all the previous comments, my colleagues. Um, last time I did talk about the screening along the front edge. I, I understand why the parking, now I you know, so some clarity around why the parking is where it is, but I am still you know focused on um, on seeing, you know, uh, pretty good screening there along that whole edge with um, low plantings as well as trees. But I, I really am very supportive of the project. I'm delighted to see it. Thank you, Stephanie. Ms. Weiser? Um, I have nothing to add. Just want to say thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing it. So you get some movement on this. And I don't really have any other comments either uh, because I agree with my colleagues. Um, I'm very supportive of the project as well. I do think what Stephanie just added with not just trees, but maybe doing some low plantings along the edge of the parking would also better block the lights. Um, Mr. Machado, you have, this is your first time to work with uh, our planning board, but Michelle is very seasoned. She's a veteran, so she knows how to respond to Liz's memo. <coughs> Liz's memo. It'll be a point by point. Um, again, most of what I was, my comments are actually also in Liz's memo. That's why I thought it was really thorough and well done. Um, I appreciate that you, you made the application more complete and whole, and that's why we're prepared to take action tonight, like I said, to get everything started. I believe the resolution will be introduced by Ms. Me. Dexter. Yep. <laughs> resolution typing action and referring the application to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development for Hudson Valley Hospice House. Resolution number 2020-17, whereas, 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 whereas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the planning board hereby, one, classes, classifies the project as an unlisted action under seeker. Two, classifies its intent to serve as lead agency in a coordinated review of the project and directs its secretary to send notice of its intent to all involved and interested agencies. Three, 
directs its secretary to refer the application to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development, pursuant to the section 239M of the General Municipal Law. Second it, Diane Canapley. Thank you, any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Say aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions, the motion carries. Just for the record, this will be circulated to the Department of Environmental Conservation for its Speedies permit, the Department of Transportation because the entrance is located on uh, Ballard Avenue or Route 9G, the uh, New York State Department of Health because they'll be needing to show a certificate of need, I gather, for this, that just came to Department of Public Works just in case, um, that just came to Department of Behavioral and Community Health for the septic as well and water supply, the Hyde Park Conservation Advisory Council, the Hyde Park Zoning Board of Appeals, Fairview Fire District, and Roosevelt Fire District because this parcel actually is in two fire districts as well. So um, anything from the applicants, Michelle, Michael, Jay? Uh, just a quick question. As far as the fire department, um, anyone in particular knows in both departments who I should contact as far as submitting the drawings? You, su you supply those to us and then we mail them out. We submit them. Okay. And Liz, I, I saw Liz's hand raised, I believe. Um, I usually try to do this during public meetings. We have a lot of comments and I just want to make sure it's okay with the board if the applicant so desires to have offline consultation with Pete and I. Always. Okay. Michelle, any questions from you or Mr. Kaminsky? Questions, for, comments from you? Uh, just, just one thing, it's not infiltration, it's filtration, which has a right. set of regulations. <laughs> Kaminsky? Also, is, is Pete on your dartboard? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who writes a review letter is on my dartboard. Okay. Yeah, well, we have one. Well, we have one also for uh, like consultants too that you know submit to you know boards. So, uh, so don't. <laughs> well, it's a converse thing. So don't think that you know you're the only one who has one. <laughs> Mr. Kaminsky. I uh, want to thank the board for uh, moving this project along. I appreciate the resolution today, and I'm looking forward over the course of the next number of months for uh, some additional resolutions. We're, as you can see, we're all excited about the project. Yes, I, I, I appreciate that. And I will, I will communicate that to our board. They will, thank you. They will appreciate that. There's a need for this. We all know, and we're happy that you chose Hyde Park to do it. So I, I feel very fortunate. Um, they're being, and by the way, Liz, I'm pretty sure I've been on several dartboards myself as well. It's just something that goes with the turf. So you learn to live with it. Anyway, um, we'll get this started. And then where are you with the ZBA right now? We had one meeting. Um, and the next one, they scheduled us for the end of this month. The, the public, the first, the public hearing will be October 28th, but it'll be left open until speakers completed. We conclude secret. The, the ZBA was, I'll say, fairly positive. They, they didn't say anything negative. Thank you. Okay. That's nice to hear. Um, I'm not sure they're always very directional, so that's actually very, very good to hear. Um, at any rate, so then we will wait to hear back from the agencies and then see what we can do. Am I right, Victoria, that we need to do the subdivision then seeker or seeker then? No, we have to do seeker first. That's what I thought, because it's subdivision. We have, to, we have to include seeker before we close the public hearing on the subdivision. Correct. OK. But we so, don't even have to schedule the public hearings until they get their variances. Um, oh, that's Although right. Their variances will be maybe contingent on. Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, let, Victoria and I will work this out and come up with an actual little timeline here so we can work it out with you guys, OK? Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you all. Yeah. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is a site plan waiver for an improvement of a ground mounted solar array to be located at 298 Mills Cross Road. Um, this is the Horowitzes, and I believe uh, Ms. Springstead is probably here. But in essence, uh, some screening, uh, some forsythia, staggered forsythia, staggered planting has been uh, proposed to screen the array. It's set fairly far back, but not that far back. It is visible from Mills Cross. 
Um, although Mills Cross is so twisty and windy that you have to really kind of <laughs> aim your neck to see these things. And you would be endangering your fellow passengers there, in my opinion. Does anyone have any questions uh, for the applicant's representative? There being that, I believe Ms. DiNapoli is going to introduce this resolution. I will. Richard Horowitz, 298 Mills Cross Road, site plan waiver, town code section 108-9.4C2, resolution 20-18, whereas a times, therefore be it resolved that the Town of High Park Planning Board hereby waives site plan requirements for the proposed ground mounted solar panel system as described in the building permit received by the building department August 13th, 2020, including supplemental information for screening presented to the planning board and per the request to the planning board dated September 10th, 2020, and as modified for additional screening screening, excuse me, on September 17th, 2020. Second, and Dexter. Thank you. Uh, before I ask for a vote, I just want to point out, I forgot to, that we did have a recommendation from Ms. Moss for the waiver itself as required by code. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand, say aye. 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 Any nays, abstentions? That motion carries. The last item on the agenda is to approve the planning board meeting minutes for September 16th, 2020. Has everyone had a chance to review them? And I want to thank, as always, Cynthia for diligently uh, working to get these out verbatim. Um, <laughs> is, we, we, there is a tool that the town pays for to assist. But as I've said before, if you saw what she first sees, it's pretty wacky. So <laughs> anyway, uh, need a motion to approve? I'll make that motion, Chris Oliver. I second that. Uh, thank you, all in favor, please raise your hand, say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, there being no other business, make it a motion to adjourn. So moved and wiser. Second, Chris Oliver. Thank you, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Krepnik and Supervisor Rohr again for providing the resources for these. And thanks everyone for working together so so collegially. There we are. Thanks. Thank you, Neil. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Good night. Everybody. Thanks, Neil. Thank you, Neil.